Well, if things are right, then it looks like I should be live here on the Facebook group. So I'm just going to refresh my page and I don't see anything here that says that it's live. So I'm going to make sure that that's working. All right. It looks like I'm live here on Facebook. Yay. That's awesome. Well, hello and welcome. If you are looking at this, then you are in the Facebook group live, or you're watching it as a uh, restream on some sort of social media platform. My name is Ross Pruden, and I am a fine art photographer and author, and I created a Facebook group for artists uh, as a form of inspiration and support. All kinds of artists, doesn't really matter what kind. Um, it can be performing artists, it can be 2D artists, 3D artists, musicians, it really doesn't matter. The point is that I wanted to create a community that uh, would inspire people to either start creating art, maybe for the first time in their lives, or to continue making art, maybe they're going through a rough patch and they just need a community of people who get what they're trying to do. So that's what I am trying to achieve with my uh, Facebook group. Um, let me start by talking a little bit about what I actually have planned in the Facebook group. Uh, I have artistic challenges and prompts to, to kind of get you going. I'll roll these out slowly over time, but uh, I'm a photographer and author and poet, so I'll be offering some tips and tricks and tutorials on each of those areas. I'll also be holding are hosting workshops and maybe peer reviews if there's interest enough for that kind of thing. There's always a great thing for networking opportunities and I really am interested in doing accountability groups because that's where I shine. That's where I feel like I can provide the most service in a really non-judgmental way, I think. Uh, it's one of those things that um, it's super easy to be in a group of people who hold you accountable, but then they're just total jerks in the process. And I'm not really interested in that. I'm interested in lifting people up and finding out what their blind spots are and helping them work through that so that they feel empowered and not dejected like, oh, I'm being beaten down like a drill sergeant. Not my vibe at all. Um, I also, I have a side business that I run on consulting with businesses to use AI to improve their workflows. So that's something that I'll be talking about specifically with creativity. We'll probably be hosting some, um, some events around how to use Midjourney, how to use uh, ChatGPT, all the things that you hear about, but you have no idea what any of that is. Um, I also, I think that this group really really excels in just offering you access to different kinds of artists in different cultures with different styles, different perspectives. That's invaluable to me. Uh, I, I always feel the most inspired when I see other people from a different part of the world or a different way of thinking about the world. Uh, I'll give you a really quick example. This is a book of poetry I picked up from a local poet named uh, Genesee Davis. Genesee is really good uh, at what she does. And um, as a poet, I actually found this incredibly inspirational because when I flip through this, I don't know if you can see this, but it has a lot of poetry on it, but it's intermixed with, with other kinds of media. And, and it's just, I, I just walked away from this feeling inspired. That was a different perspective as a poet that opens up my mind. And so that's, I wanted to be able to offer that to this group. I also wanted to do member spotlights uh, and really tout success stories. Success stories don't have to be like, oh my God, I sold my work, or it can be as something as simple as, I reached a creative block and I managed to find my way out. Great, that's totally the kind of thing I would like to hear about. Um, I also am going to be offering some reading lists about creativity and some 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 books about business and mindsets, really just more about mindsets and understanding your blind spots, things like that. 
so there will be some educational content. A lot of it will be inspirational content and some tutorials. So it's going to be kind of a mixed bag. And but I'm super excited about this. the The idea is that um, I want to have a minimum a minimum of 200 people in the group, and ideally we could have thousands. But um, I'm just trying to keep it kind of relatively small. People who are interested in joining, stay joined, you know, want to communicate with people in the group and be more active. So that's the general idea. Um, why am I doing this? Because it, I get lots of benefit from being around creative people. So it's kind of selfish in that way, I guess. But I see that seems to be a recurring theme. The more artists I talk to, the more they seem inspired by that as well. And I think there, there's real value in that. You know, if you walk into a room and everyone turns around and goes, what, you're an artist? Like, oh, that could just be soul crushing. But if you walk into a room and they look at you and go, whoa, what are you creating? Tell me about what you're doing. They get excited, not because maybe you're a competitor to what they're doing, but because it opens up their mind and it inspires them to do other stuff. So the world is better when everyone creates more art. That's how I, I see it. And I think everyone has art within them that is just waiting to be pulled out, to pry, to pry open your heart and pull it out. So um, that's my general plan. Now, I put together a, uh, a checklist. And I think because I think one of the things that artists really struggle with is how do I how do I eliminate distractions in my life in order to do the things that I need to do? And how do I be the most inspired and the most productive uh, as an artist? And it it's it, I'm, I'm talking about artists specifically, but it's also true for lots of other people. You just want to be more productive. So. I put together a checklist. Uh, to encourage people to get in what is called a flow state. And so the checklist is called the Artist Flow State Checklist. And the idea is very simple. You just have much more awareness around the kinds of things that you do to line yourself up and stack the deck so that when you come and sit down and do whatever it is, pottery, sculpture, painting, photography, whatever it is, that you are ready and you are able to be at your peak performance. So my flow state checklist is, um, it talks about eliminating distractions. It talks about um, reading books, listening to music, maybe lighting incense, whatever it is, using the most tactile friendly tools that encourage you to create art. So it's really just touching all the bases. And I put it into a chronological sequence. Um, it's a PDF. I made a PDF of it and it's still in development, but it's available for download right now. And I will put, uh, I will put this on the screen. So there it is. Uh, you can, if you go to this address, rossprudent.art slash make some art, it will take you to my newsletter. So it will explain to you a little bit about the newsletter. Just add your email to it and you it'll send you through a sequence and you'll be able to download the thing. And hopefully you decide to stay on the newsletter, but you don't have to. If you really don't want to stay on the newsletter, please unsubscribe. Uh, it's not it's not mandatory, but, you know, I'm going to try and pull you in and tell you a little bit more about me and what I do. So that's the first thing. Um, I, I'm going to leave this up on the screen just for a little while. I wanted to talk to you about an event that I um, that I was at in July. On July 14th, which happened to be Bastille Day in in France, I gave a lecture about why art is magic. And it was a presentation to really demonstrate the value of art at here. Let me just take this off the screen because there's no real need for that. Um, the presentation was called Art is Magic. And at some point, I'm going to convert it into a YouTube thing and, and upload it. But the gist of it was really asking the question, why we do art? What is it about art that's so important 
that we spend so much money on it. Um, I actually looked up the numbers. I didn't believe it at first, but apparently uh, the amount of money spent on on art, buying and collecting, is about the same amount as what France spends on their retirement, their social security programs, which is about 68 billion euros, which is, it's crazy. That's that's a crazy amount of money. And granted, there probably a lot of that is is going to be, you know, the, like the Van Goghs, the, the, the crazy, insane amounts. But a lot of that is just basic artists, you know, simple artists. Have, I mean, we could talk about film and whatnot, but I don't really count commercial film in this category, although it is technically art. So there is something to it. There is something to the reason why we create art and the reason why we buy and consume art. So I started thinking about this. And when I gave the presentation, I basically came to the conclusion that art is um, the reason why we love to spend money and exchange money for art is because it is a transformative element. It, it transforms who we are. Um, the most obvious, of course, is that it is aesthetically pleasing. So we love music. We love, um, we love uh, paintings. We love sculpture. We love lots of different things. So aesthetically, th that's probably the first thing that we think of when we think of art. But the other element is that it transforms us. It can be a cathartic experience sometimes. There's some kinds of art that when we look at it, it's just, it blows you away. My wife had this experience in, um, in Rome. She went to see the Pieta, the Vatican, and she would just stare at it. She, would, she actually got up early one morning to go in there to look at this incredible sculpture and just be in awe. And I think that's one of the main reasons why we love art is that it can transform us and move us emotionally. Uh, so it can be a very evocative experience. There are lots of other elements to it, but that's the gist, is that you can look at a piece of art and it transforms who you are. It touches you. I mean, the art itself just exists, right? Unless it's performative art, granted. But I had this experience when I was at, uh, we went to the Musée d'Orsay, d'Orsay in Paris. And I saw this incredible painting. Uh, I can't remember the painter's name right now, but it was a, obviously a king and his queen. And his queen was holding him in a very loving embrace. He was sitting on the throne and there was a door next to him. And through the door were walking, um, uh, the papacy, the the clergy. They were the clergy was walking through the door, and clearly something had just happened. We just missed the, the main action, and this was the aftermath. And I'm yeah, I'm getting choked up just thinking about it. But the painting was this. It was I, I was drawn to it because the clergy. It was kind of a darker area of the painting. You couldn't really see what was going on. You knew that there were people there. You could see the hats. Oh, there are the clergy. Got it. And then in front of him on the ground, there was what looked to be like a big cigarette. It's a very strange looking thing, but it was clearly like a candle, one of the big candles that the clergy has. And I said, okay, what is this about? I'm drawn in. There's clearly something that, that has just happened. What is this? And the title explained it all. It said, the excommunication of Robert the Pious. Everything clicked into place in my brain. He's called Robert the Pious, and he's been excommunicated. So this is like literally the worst day of his life. He's being consoled by his queen. Now, I don't know the context of it, but just on the face of it, this was a devastating photograph because I could relate to his feel feeling of vulnerability of humiliation, of um, just terror almost, of is, is my soul going to hell? This is a piece of fabric, really, that someone has put dots on, you know, strokes with paint, and that's it. 
everything that was happening was happening up here. That's what I mean when I say art is magic. It's, it's created, it's out there, it's done, it sits there inert until we come along and we recreate the story in our minds. That's amazing. That blows me away that art has that ability. And there's actually this really funny meme that says, uh, reading is like staring at pieces of dead wood and hallucinating. That's it. That's the whole story about what art is. I think that's incredible. And so that's why, that's why the, the theme of the presentation was art is magic. And Christina mentions, you should see the budget for the city of Berlin. They subsidize art at a level greater than the NEA. I totally believe it. Berlin is, actually I have a friend of mine who just went to Berlin uh, because it's so creative, because it's so inspirational. Anyway, hi, Christi Christina. <laughs> it's good to see you. I'm so glad you're there. Um, so anyway, uh, I wanted to tell you another couple stories. One is um, when I was in um, when I was in Sacramento in 2003, I was working a dead end job, and I'd gone through the whole "let's write a screenplay, let's make a movie, let's do all this," and I just got completely um, disenchanted with the entertainment industry. And I I think I reached a, a conclusion at one point: no matter how hard I work, it's just going to be a blueprint. What is the point? Of writing a screenplay, and I remember it was a June afternoon in uh, in downtown Sacramento, and I was staring out the window, and I said to myself, "I have to do something creative. I have to be creative, just for its own sake." Uh, and I am happiest when I'm writing something kind of big and expansive and cool. So I started writing a screenplay. Uh, it was based on an idea I had heard from David Blaine, of all people. He was being interviewed, and he and he said, "Yeah, I just remember walking around Manhattan with my this girl, who was not my girlfriend at the time, but after having walked around the city all day long, I really loved that. I I instantly connected with her. So I said, that's what I need to do. I need to write a story about that." It's a, it, it just became a super interesting idea. So I, I said, all right, look, I'm just gonna chain myself to my desk and only do research on my computer, not go anywhere. Just if I can't get it, if I can't research it from the internet, it's, I'm not gonna write about it. And by doing that, I was able to write a so, you know, first draft in a few weeks. And then it took me multiple versions. And when it was done a few months later, I was really proud of it, you know? I mean, it wasn't the best. Uh, but I didn't really care if it was uh, commercially viable. I did it because I wanted to create something new. I wanted to create something for me. And I've written three feature screenplays now, not counting uh, all the shorts and TV stuff that, that I was involved in. And of the, those three projects, that's the one that almost went all the way to uh, a, a film deal because people just reacted to the the energy, the passion. I leaned into it completely and the result was really amazing. So, oh my goodness, my nose. It's allergy season here in the Pacific Northwest. So that's the first story. I just wanted to tell you that sometimes the, the simple act of creating is the value. It's not, I'm gonna create this to sell it. I'm gonna create it for me. And that's what I would like to create for my Facebook group is just create, create for its own sake. You're happier. It, it's an amazing experience. Now, um, in 2017, I was starting to inch back into photography. And in 2017, we went to visit friends in uh, Mexico. And while we were there, I said, you know, I'd really like to take a portrait of, of of your son, if you don't mind. So I did, his name was Henry. And um, the picture that I ended up taking was awful. <laughs> it's just terrible. I mean, it was embarrassingly bad. Like I look back on it now and this is not something I would tell a lot of people about. But I started thinking about it because I've seen my work since then and it's gotten better. And now I look back on that picture 
And I'm actually really proud of it in a weird way because it's a marker for how far I've come. Not necessarily that it was bad, but that it was a step in the process. And being a step in the process, had I not done that, I would not have gotten to where I am today. Um, it was out of focus. The background was bad. It was weird composition. It was not color corrected. I mean, it was just an awful photograph. But I look at it and I think, wow, just a few months after that, I started getting better because I kept learning, and tweaking and learning and tweaking and getting better technically at the craft. And now I charge $250 an hour to do portraits, fine art portraiture. And the quality of the stuff that I make is so much better now. I mean, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that for all artists, we are on this journey. And almost as if the gods were speaking to me, uh, I saw a meme to just this morning from a, a photographer and painter named Michelle Carmen Gomez. And the meme was, if the version of you from five years ago could see the could see you right now, they would be so proud. Keep going. So if there's mission, if there's a lesson that I can impart to everyone, it's that don't worry about what you're doing now. Know that if you keep at it, it's going to get better and it's going to get better. And then one day you're going to look back and go, oh my God, how far have I come? So that's my that's that's a super important story I wanted to tell you. And then finally, I want to tell you um, about the coffee mug story. And then I'm going to wrap up, tell you a little bit about the guests that I would like to have in the show. And um, Christina, you are welcome to come on the show. I would love to chat with you about what you're doing, what you have done, the struggles you've had, all that stuff. So consider that an open invitation. So um, at my grand opening in 2022, November 2022, um, I had these coffee mugs made. They have my they have my little moniker on them. They've got the grand opening, the actual date, and then my website, just a you know as a memento of the occasion. And um, and the the book that I had written. Let me grab a copy. I don't have a copy immediately on hand. I had written this book, which is an anthology of short stories. You can get it on Amazon, but um, the um, the book is 108 short stories across 11 different genres. And they're all really short. They're like micro stories about, on average, about 600 words long. So the, the number 108, I mentioned that to someone and they said, oh, that's the, the mystical number, magical number. They said something I'm like, really? I, I had no idea. And I didn't really understand it, um, but I kind of lodged it away. When it came time to actually order these, I could order them in groups of 70, uh, 36, 72, or 108. So I thought, come on, that's... The universe is talking to me. I've got to order 108, 108 mugs for 108 stories. Awesome. So I did. And when I designed these, this was so cool. Uh, I put a yellow thing on the inside to be to represent creativity uh, because I wanted to have a message for the grand opening, some sort of imparting wisdom, not a wisdom exactly, but more like a calling, a call to action to do something. And so what I came up with was make some art. Make some art is a running theme. And this is really just, I was trying to come up with some sort of message that was pure and uh, something that everyone can relate to. And when I say art in this context, I was saying it doesn't have to be art necessarily, but live artfully. Um, Always try to improve, always, like if it means gardening, but gardening well, gardening in a almost a zen-like state. That's kind of what I was talking about. But I realized that it was kind of a, 
that it was kind of an important message. As, as time went on, I said, you know, that really is what I'm about. It's all about, I encourage people to be creative. So anyway, long story short, uh, or shorter, I signed them and uh, numbered them. And so this is, I think this is Scott Walker's. I'm holding onto his for a little bit. So I made these and um, I didn't even tell my wife about this, but I had 108 of these and the first two, number one and number two, uh, actually the first five, I got, I set aside five and I said, look, number five is going to be, I, I dedicated these to the five people who really inspired me to create this collection of short stories. Um, and I went in reverse chronological order. So number five was for my daughter, who without her desire to create her own book, I probably wouldn't have crossed the finish line with mine because mine had been languishing for a while. So I, I said, Zoe, this is yours. Come up and collect number five. Number four was for my friend Suhail. Um, actually, number number three was for Suhail. He's the one who actually sat with me and we came up with the, the idea roughly. Uh, and without that conversation, I never would have taken it to the next stage. Number four was for uh, Liara. Liara is a person that I hope to have on this podcast, it's, or this, um, this live stream. She has a tattoo right here on her chest that says, write poetry or write poems. And that really, that really touched me that someone would actually tattoo something like that on their chest as a reminder to be creative. So that was also, and I was right in the middle of editing and so it just kind of gave me the impetus to keep going. And then obviously number two and number one were for my parents because my mom has always been a creative force in my life, always willing to listen, always willing to encourage without judgment or not as much judgment as some people. And then my dad, of course, was, he was, a, even though he was a dentist, he was a photographer at his work. So, cause he would develop x-rays. So there was a creative element really in my life at all times in one form or another. But my mom and dad have passed away now. So they weren't there to collect these. So I, I took these and I very ceremoniously, I said, they aren't here to collect these. So what I'm going to do might trigger some of you. So just be prepared. And I took these and I placed them in a very, um, like a silk container and I got out a hammer and I said, I'm going to destroy these. And once I destroy them as a way to symbolize, nobody gets to see what happens after you die. I'm going to throw away these shards and never look at them and nobody gets to see them. And I smashed them both and I put them aside and I said, you know, that's, I can't remember exactly what I said, but the gist of it was, you know, that was my way of saying goodbye to them because my mom had just died about a year before that. So I very purposefully created an artistic moment that everyone there would remember. And I did that on purpose because I wanted it to not just be about making art, but also about living the making of art about doing something performative that has real meaning and import. So that's my make some art story. Um, and hopefully gives you a little bit of an underpinning on what I plan on doing with this group. I wanna encourage people to create more stuff. And um, to that end, let me tell you a little bit about the guest lineup that we have. Um, so I have, Michelle Carmen Gomez, who I mentioned earlier, she is a photographer and painter based in Austin, Texas, and she has agreed to uh, come on next week, I think. Uh, there is an artist based in Tacoma. His name is Jason Matias, and he is a photographer. He runs um, a paid community called The Art of Selling Art, in which I'm a member and a moderator. And he's amazing. Uh, if you're interested in selling your art, he is definitely the person to talk to. He has a free group that uh, you can join with basic advice, but the paid group is really incredible. Uh, I've, I joined it instantly once I realized what it was. He'll be coming on at some point. 
Um, we have Scott McCarthy. He is a leadership coach. He's based in Canada, and I've been in a mastermind with him for about a year. And before that, he was my um, my life coach, I guess, not life coach, a uh, business coach. And then uh, my business partner, Noah Santoni. Noah lives in the UK. He is a founder of a company called What A Idea. Uh, the A and the I are capitalized. Uh, and he has another business called SWOT AI, S-W-O-T AI. Uh, those are businesses that help. Um, it's a, it's a, those two businesses help businesses. I instantly get information on competitors using AI. Uh, instead of pouring through 200 page documents to find strategic advantages, you plunk in the documents, it spits out all the stuff. It's a really innovative product. I've followed him for a long time. Anyway, this has nothing to do with art specifically, but he's going to come on and we're going to talk about how to use AR, AI for art, uh, which should be a pretty interesting conversation. You definitely won't want to miss that. I have a local. Um, macro photographer named Melissa Bigsby. She is a, a photographer and batik artist. She makes batiks. Um, she's amazing. She's actually mentoring my daughter in photography, which is super interesting. And uh, for an eighth grade project that she's doing. Uh, Kristen Brownell is a writer and author whom I followed for over 10 years. Um, I love everything that she does. She's really interesting. I've never met her in real life, so it'd be really interesting to get her on the live stream. And then here's the big one I'm going for is uh, Tiffany Schlain. So Tiffany Schlain is, by her own website, an artist, activist, Emmy-nominated filmmaker, national best-selling author, and founder of the Webby Awards. She is a really interesting person and just a lovely character. Um, she has a she has a uh, cross section of a tree, and you know that you know the cross section of the tree where they they uh, they pinpoint all the different historical events over time that have happened during you know at this ring at this date happened this and she saw that and she said you know the problem with this is that it's all patriarchy driven. So she decided to have her own tree made uh, with the rings and then circle the rings and pinpoint all the uh, women's accomplishments over time. Genius. Uh, she does that, a bunch of other stuff, super interesting person. I'm really hoping she comes on here. So um, that's what I've got. I'm going to throw this up. If you're watching this on social media, I, I encourage you to join our group. It's rossprudent.art slash Facebook group. Uh, I am, it's 1.30. This is going to be a short one because I don't have anybody on here. And that's basically all you need to know. Um, our live streams are at the moment scheduled for Thursdays at 1 p.m. PST or Pacific Daylight Time. I never remember if we're in the daylight time or not. Um, anyway, our next meeting uh, next week should be Michelle Carmen Gomez. Um, so definitely tune in and I'm going to end this stream and you know what, no matter what you do, just remember to go make some art.